Hi, I'm Kevin Eikenberry, and I'm here to help you reach your potential as a leader and a human being. Welcome to Remarkable TV and the Remarkable Leadership Podcast. Today, we're talking about what culture really is. Are you ready? Let's get started. Culture is one of those words that's talked about a lot. It's talked about in organizations. It's even talked about now in the popular press and in the media. What is our culture going to look like? What will, how will organizational cultures change? It's consultants speak. It's talked about at high levels. It's talked about with grave importance. It is gravely important, but it doesn't have to be so complex. In fact, I want to talk to you about what culture really is using a simple story from my family's past to help you do that. So, I grew up in a farming family, and my dad grew up in a farming family. And if you're a gardener or a farmer, you know what a cutworm is. A cutworm is one of a variety of worms that generally cuts off plants, stalks, stems. They're not so good. Cutworms. Well, a few months ago, I was with my uncle, my dad's younger brother, and he said, in, in the family growing up, the five kids and mom and dad and I, my grandparents, every once in a while, you couldn't get a word in edgewise with the conversation with seven people at the table. And so someone would say, speaking of cutworms, which simply meant, this is my way of changing the subject. Now, it makes no sense. It's kind of silly. But the point is, it was a part of their family's culture. He can't remember exactly where it originally came from, but it came to mean, I want to gracefully and respectfully change the subject. But they didn't say all those things. They just said, uh, speaking of cutworms, and then moved on. And people knew that they were changing the subject. So, point number one, culture is story. That story says something about my grandparents and their kids, my aunts and uncles and fathers, family culture. That story gives us a glimpse into it. That story is a part of what their culture was because culture is behavior. I often say that at the end of the day, culture is no more than the way we do things around here, which is comes through stories and by how we actually do stuff. How do we do things? What happens when? How do we respond when? When there's a customer complaint, what do we do? When there's a need to celebrate, what do we do? And a hundred other things. Now, once my uncle told me the story, speaking of cutworms, I started saying it and other people looked at me like, what in the heck are you talking about, Kevin? Which leads us to the next point, which is culture needs to become inclusive, which means if we want it to work and be helpful, everybody needs to know the story. Everyone needs to know what all those little inside things mean, what all those acronyms mean. People need to be included. And so once I then told the story, some people thought it was weird, but then they understood. And if we repeat it often enough, if we use the new behavior often enough, it will become a natural part of how we do things. Right now, for me, it's mostly just a new culture between my uncle and I, if I keep using it, and now I'm sharing it with you, perhaps it grows. So culture is, must become inclusive. Culture is little everyday things. Speaking of cutworms, it's a little thing. It's an offhanded thing, but it says something about respect. It says something about how we interact with each other. And so when we look to change culture, look by starting at what are the little things to know what it is, and what are the little things that we could shift or change that will start to change it in the direction that we want? Which leads to the last point. If we want to create the culture we want in our organizations, we must look for ways to create, extend, and enrich it. And I use that word enrich because that's where stories come back in. Stories create a three-dimensional way for us to understand the culture and extend the culture as well. Let me close with today's tweet. Culture doesn't come solely from a big corporate push. It is built and formed in stories, behaviors, and everyday occurrences. Well, if you liked what you heard or saw today, I hope you'll come back again to the podcast because every week on the Remarkable Leadership Podcast, you'll find episodes like this, 
but also episodes where I interview and interact and share with thought leaders in all areas of leadership and personal development. The Remarkable Leadership Podcast. All the ways to learn more and subscribe from your favorite location can be found on this page. I hope you'll do that. And I hope you'll be back next week, whether it's for Remarkable TV or the Remarkable Leadership Podcast.